Hello everyone and welcome to this fly tying video. Today we're going to tie the Instajig Nymph and here I'm going to show a little bit of the new materials that we're going to have soon in store. So first off for the hook this is a Tiemco 2487BL and in a size 10 and this is just this grub shrimp hook a little bit lighter wire and also the thing about this one is to have quite a big hook gap so if you have a hook with a big hook gap it's going to work really well for you then the new material on this one I'm going to use you could also use just the regular tungsten bead or brass bead but this one is going to make your fly ride upside down once you're finished and this is really cool as you're not going to snag the bottom as much and also I think all flies have a little better movement or they ride better in the water once they have like this keel so the fly is going to be this way and this bead is one of the news this year and it comes from hairline and it's called the instajig tungsten head and what it is is it's a drop shaped tungsten bead with a hole drilled in one end so this way you're going to have most of the weight on the side that this bead is facing and this one is a 2.3 millimeter bead on this size 10 works really well then the other materials for this fly this one is not really new but we're just taking it in in the store and it's called the uh, Kylis Nil Skin this one is in the color translucent bug gut and you've seen me use the virtual nymph nymph skin on many of my flies but here we have a great alternative and does exactly the same thing. This one is this nice translucent pale green color. Works really well. You could also color this or make an underbody of any color that you want and it's going to shine through just a little bit and make this really nice and natural looking fly. For the thorax I'm going to use just some hair sear eye stub. And this is some hair sear with some eye stub mixed together and this one is in the color brown nice dark brown with green highlights oh I forgot to mention this new color as well it's really cool this one is called mottled brown and it's this brown with black speckled and makes a really nice and natural looking fly for the tail I'm going to use just some olive pheasant tail and for the legs this is a technique I saw on David McPhail's YouTube channel and is using a little bit of deer hair to mix in with your dubbing and makes it this really nice buggy looking thorax with the legs sticking out so I'm going to try to show this technique but if you want to see the real deal just head over to David McPhail and his carrot pupa I think he called it just really shows this technique well and for the thread this is just some 30 denier GSP and I'm going to start from right behind the bead and here you could also use a little heavier thread if you wanted to I just run out of the 50 denier so I'm going to use this 30 both work really well this one is in white so you can color it in any color you could also use a brown or a black it doesn't really matter the thread is not going to show so much the only thing is when you use this more translucent nymph skin is that if you don't use any underbody or any other material than your thread it's the thread that's going to shine through when you have one of these like this translucent color and I like to use the white just to have a little lighter fly but if you use black it's just going to darken it a little bit or if you use green it's going to make your fly look a little greener and here what I have to do now that I have the 30 denier is to make quite a lot of turns to make this bead stand in the right place and I want this to stand up from the hook and not in the gap so this way it's going to ride upside down like a normal jig hook and this is really cool with these new beads is that you can use any of your regular hooks like this just pupa hook and you can turn it into a jig hook 
just using this new beat instead of having to buy special kinds of hooks and special kinds of beads you just buy this one and you have this really nice jigging action but with your preferred hook and also most of the jig hooks that are made have more like a nymph hook profile or dry fly hook profile and a little narrower gate. So this is the other thing that I really like to be able to use one of these pupa or shrimp hooks instead. You have better hooking possibilities with these ones. So there 400 turns later the bead is in place so here I would suggest you use a little heavier thread just to make this but now it's not going to move anywhere. You could also just put a little drop of super glue and this won't move on you once you start fishing. And then I'm going to go back to about the half point on the body and here I'm going to tie in the tails. Here I'm just going to take about five fibers or so, tear them off the stem and then I'm going to tie these in about half the length of the body. I don't want these to be too long. Just a few turns, see if they are the right length and this seems quite good. Then holding these a little bit at an angle towards or up, it's going to keep these in the center of the hook. And there we go, I'm going to stop about where the barb is on a hook with barb. Then go up again, right up behind the bead, tying these down, then you can cut off the excess. And here we're going to tie in the next material, and this is some deer hair. This one has been dyed in olive, but you could also use a natural one or a dyed in brown. This really depends on the color scheme of your fly. Take a pinch and cut them off the hide. And then, depending on the quality of your deer hair, you're going to have more or less under fur. And what I do is I take one of these little comps and I just brush through the ends while spinning these a little bit and this is going to take away most of the underfur. You could also just pull these out by hand and then holding them by the tips I'm going to take out the shorter fibers as well. And here I have one that's the wrong way so I'm just going to take this one out. And then I'm going to stack them, so tips first in a hair stacker, a few taps, and then you can see that all of these are aligned. Take them out, then here I'm going to tie these in towards the front over the bead and this can be a little bit difficult with this insta jig bead as it has a high profile on this side so it's going to spin on you a little bit but try to keep them in the middle and here we want the length to be about the whole length of the body or slightly longer as we're going to turn these back to make the legs and with this 30 denier you have to be a little bit careful so you don't just cut these off applying too much pressure at once. And then I'm going to take these back a little bit and then you can just pull these as you go. And here as I said if you want to see this technique really mastered just go to David McPhail's YouTube channel. And he really makes this look easy. And then cut off if you have any fibers sticking out the wrong way. And then I'm going to put down a little bit of thread to 
cover up any ugly parts. Here I have one fiber. Just tear this one away. And here, as we tie this in this way with the pheasant tail at the back and the deer hair here at the top, we're going to have a slight taper already built in into this fly. And then I'm going to go up to about a few millimeters behind the bead and I'm going to prep my nymph skin so I'm just going to cut off a little piece and what I like to do is to cut this at an angle to start with this way you don't waste any material and then we have this point and this is a little bit easier to tie in so the long side towards or facing down I'm going to start to tie this in then you can really pull on this to make a really slim body take this down to the tails and then I'm going to go back up again and here is the time when you can put in an underbody if you want to put in some holographic tinsel you could also do this but here I'm just going to leave this white and I'm going to take this up slightly overlapping turns. I'm going to overlap each turn about half the way in the previous one. This is going to make a tapered and also segmented body. And then once you come up to the bead and the thread, just pull tight and tie this off. few turns to make this really secure then in front pull on the new skin and cut it away then I'm just going to go back to where I want the thorax to be started and I'm going to take my hair sear eye stub in the color brown just a little pinch you could also mix these yourself if you buy some Dark brown hair here and some eye stub. I think this one looks a little bit like the pheasant tail eye stub or a green one. But here you have this in a neat little package all blended. So you don't have to think about that. So I'm going to start. I've put a little bit of dubbing onto the thread and I've just started to build up the start of my thorax, then I'm going to take a few of these deer hair and pull them back and for each turn of dubbing I'm going to pull a little bit more of this deer hair back and this are going to represent some legs and then just advance your thread with dubbing I'm going to apply a little bit more of this dubbing and then pull back a few more and here I'm up to the last ones and just build up a little dubbing color and then a little bit more of this same dubbing you could also use another colored dubbing to build up a little color if you want a hot spot on this one I'm just going to go with this brown and this is also going to lock the bead in place then what I like to do is to crease these this deer hair back just a little bit to make it lay a little bit lower and then the last thing a little touch of super glue and then a few turns and the last thing is to whip finish one, two, three, four. Pull tight. Cut off your thread. And then I'm just going to brush this deer hair and the dubbing a little bit together. And making sure that this is really buggy looking. 
and then just give them a slight crease and this is going to make them lay a little flatter on this body and then once this fly is in the water it's going to ride upside down like this and these are then going to represent the legs of the fly and alongside with this quite spiky dubbing and if you would like to you could also do these legs so this deer hair a little bit shorter but quite like it this way as I said in my previous video I'm now working full time in a fishing store and I am responsible for the fly tying so I'm really happy about that and this is a store in Switzerland in Langenthal and it's called Fission Point CH. We only ship in Switzerland so if you are one of the 1.2% of the people who watch my videos who live in Switzerland it would really mean a lot to me if you could come by the shop and say hi. I would love to talk a little bit about or a lot about fly time and so as I said these materials are soon going to be out in the store. I'm going to leave a link in the description below and you can check it out. So there we have this Insta Jig nymph and this is just a really simple pattern that you can tie using this new jig heads and I just wanted to show a little bit about the new possibilities that you have with these new really cool materials. So Thanks for watching and if you liked this video make sure to subscribe and till next time, happy tying!